So good morning and welcome to the City of Sandpoint's pre-solicitation conference for the RFP 233400-1 for SCADA upgrades. Um, we have a few attending on site here at City Hall, 1123 Lake Street in Sandpoint, Idaho. And then we have um, virtual attendees as well. This is a non-mandatory pre-solicitation conference. So it does not mean if you didn't attend that you can't submit. So uh, with that, I'm Cheryl Hughes. I'm the grants, contracts, and procurement manager with the city of Sandpoint. Um, and I will just kind of be here as a kind of its facilitator. Um, but we also will have the others introduce themselves and what their roles are as well. Thank you. I'm Adam Skoog. I'm here with the IT department. Um, also went around the all the different sites and reviewed. So I'll be here to help answer questions. Uh, Greg Lanning, Utilities Director. Um, I make sure the invoices are taken care of, especially. But uh, I'm not entirely ignorant of SCADA, but there's a lot of things I don't know. And I mean, even during this meeting, I'll be learning a lot as well. And um, uh, Donnie, I, I assume you can hear us, right? Yeah. And uh, we've relied heavily on Donnie and his team to, you know, get us to this point in terms of the technical uh, side of it and specifications. Um, and not to short Adam in any way, because uh, as our local IT guy, he'll be heavily involved uh, with everything that goes in, as well as the longer term as well. So, welcome. And for that, I, I'll turn it right over to Donnie then. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Donnie McKay. I am an electrical engineer and electrical department manager for the Idaho Falls office for Michael Baker International. And about two years ago, we performed an evaluation of all the control systems uh, that include the water, wastewater, and collection systems for the city of Sandpoint, and then worked with the city over the following uh, almost two, well, over two years to develop the uh, a report and uh, eventually this RFP. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, looking at the agenda, I think we've we've gotten through our our introduction, and we'll just jump right in to a summary of the project. Would you like me to share my screen with the with the RFP, or do, does Cheryl? Do you want to share it? Um, I my computer's not connected, so perfect. I've got it ready, so I'll share. Okay, so you should be able to. Everyone should be able to see that. Let me know if you can. Looks good. Okay, thank you. If you could zoom in on that a little bit so people can see it a little better. Absolutely. Be Let's do that. Okay. So the purpose of this project is to upgrade the necessary controls across the water system, the wastewater treatment facility, and the collections uh, lift stations around the city. Um, the, the project will include the design, construction, commissioning, and ideally long-term support of these systems. So the city is really looking for an integrator that can not only work through these upgrades, but then can, can continue to support be on call as necessary of these systems. Um, let's see here. So let's kind of walk through this. The water treatment system includes two treatment plants, two reservoirs and a booster station. The wastewater system includes one wastewater treatment plant. And then the collection system includes 19 lift stations throughout the city. Yeah, I'm gonna skip over. You guys have, I'm sure, uh, all reviewed this, but we'll just kind of walk through it. Um, if anyone has, questions as we go, feel free to stop me. I, it's probably easier to answer questions as we go rather than just all at the end. I do see we have one hand raised. Okay, go ahead. You'll have, have, have to let me know when you see that because I don't think I can see that. Okay, I'm going to give some permission here to talk. Okay. Jonathan? 
Good morning. This is uh, John calling from Advanced Control Systems. I um, I didn't get the agenda, but I imagine we're it, it looks like we're going to go through this and, as you say, answer questions as we go through it. Um, yeah. So the collection system includes 19 lift stations. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I only found 17 listed below. So are we, my assumption is that the other two need nothing as, um, addressed, is that correct? Yeah, so there's, there are um, two that don't need any work done at the moment, or they're already gonna be in a different project for replacement. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good, good question. Thanks for that clarification. So let me back up just a little bit. Um, the, um, let's let's talk about the agenda because probably haven't seen that. So I'm going to walk through project overview, objectives and outcomes, timeline, milestones, budget, et cetera. Uh, we'll we'll touch on the technical specs and the scope of work, which is what we've started on already. Go through questions there. Then I'll probably turn it back over to Cheryl and let her talk about the bid submission and evaluation process and contract and legal requirements. Any last questions, talk about next steps and then closing remarks. So that's kind of a quick summary of uh, our agenda for today. <clears throat> so starting with the wastewater treatment plant, this is an older facility that will be completely replaced sometime in the next few years. Uh, there exist, there, the existing syst system it has seven PLCs controlling different processes throughout the plant. Uh, they're all networked together with fiber. It's in a uh, star configuration, sorry, a loop configuration right now. Um, it's also utilizing an alarm dialer. Sorry, comment there. Okay. Um, primarily, Throughout the facility, it's Rockwell Automation software, Allen Bradley hardware. Um, the, the main operator station uses Factory Talk View SE. And the city across all of its controls wants to standardize on compatible Rockwell and Allen Bradley software and hardware, respectively. Um, I have two, do... two hands raised here. Okay, go ahead. Thank you again. On this uh, Rockwell Automation, Allen Bradley, Factory Talk, View SC line, <clears throat> um, we were wondering, is the city willing to entertain an alternative SCADA platform, such as inductive automation's ignition? I can certainly answer that from my perspective, Adam, if you'd like me to start with that question. Um, yeah, this is not a wholesale replacement of all the systems the city has. I know that you know inductive automation can be used to <clears throat> um, integrate multiple different vendors, but uh, I guess my initial concern would be that they have Allen Bradley systems that are not going to be replaced, and. Um, so we, we then we started having to maintain multiple licenses and you know software specifically with inductive automation software right? that's not a hardware issue per se but um, but yeah I guess that's that's my initial concern. Anything else, Jonathan? Oh, I just asked because some of the sophisticated features asked for are we're not sure about. Um, achieving them with factory talk and it'd be a, it'd be very simple with ignition and uh, would also allow the city to maintain a centralized license structure, which appears to be pretty important for the city. But thank you for the answer. Yeah, that's definitely something that this, we're trying to help the city migrate towards is is a centralized license rather than licensing each different system on its own. So, uh, you know, a network based license using clients, um, but with redundancy in case there's a loss of communication. 
Um, is there anything specific, a specific feature you said that you were concerned about being able to meet all the requirements using Allen Bradley and Rockwell? Um, is there anything specific there that stands out? I'd have to go back through my notes so I can catch up with you on that uh, a little later. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, that. Um, I think Cheryl will have a formal question submission process, correct? After this. Um, I will have to have that conversation, Donnie. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think that's what we should do, though, that, you know, uh, up to a certain point. Um, we should entertain questions and, you know, coming out of this meeting or those who don't attend, if they have any questions, they can submit, we can provide answers. Um, yeah, and, that submission process is the same. Um, it's submitted in writing. This recording will be put on the solicitation page. Okay. So any re potential respondents that didn't attend can watch the recording. And if there's any follow-up questions, they would just follow the directions as stated in the RFP. Perfect. Yep. So yeah, we, we had another answer, specific answers on those. We had another hand raised here as well. And then we also have somebody in here that wants to talk. So give me one second. All right, Mitchell. Is it Mitchell or? Uh, yeah, Mitchell works. I'm uh, also with the advanced control systems. Um, uh to recall my question one of my questions was the same one that john had with the um option for using alternative SCADA platforms um but we will uh, kind of formalize that question and see um i know yeah. that i was the one that brought up some of the concerns with i think it was had to do with the contact management within um Rockwell software because I know the factory talk doesn't have a built-in alarm dialer. You have to use a separate platform like that, like Win 911, which is mentioned in the in the RFP document. Sure. Um, the other option, the question I had is currently you mentioned you're using an alarm dialer. Is that just a hardware alarm dialer yeah. with inputs and then it dials out a predetermined message? Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And then we also have a question here in house. Okay. Currently, the deadline for questions is tomorrow. Is that going to be extended some so we've got time to respond and review? Let's see. That the questions deadline will be extended because the deadline for submission of the RFP has been extended. <laughs> So that'll be an addendum will be issued for that. Mm -hmm. But it'll be a week before the deadline. Right. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm John with uh, Columbia Electric Supply. And so we're, we're here representing, we're the Rockwell uh, distributor. And uh, we've been working with other city of city hubs for very similar um, projects with factory dog view server, uh, SC server. And I, I'd be interested to see what they would think that our system can provide because I know that you know we do this. This is a definitely in our wheelhouse and something that that I know we can address concerns if they think that something can't be done. All right. Yeah. Which which location are you out of, John? Or are you based in? I didn't catch that if he said what it, what, what it is. Post Falls location. Post Falls. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. If there's any capabilities questions, John, I'll I'll reach out to you. Appreciate that. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Yeah, as we mentioned, the last sentence here on on page two is is talking about um, having a <clears throat> The intent is to have a factory talk um, server client type arrangement so that uh, we can be using clients across the uh, this mainly affect the water and wastewater treatment systems 
the uh, lift stations have uh, local panel views, HMI, so it wasn't uh, as much intended for there, for those locations. So a, like a factory talk view, ME type arrangement is the intent there. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks like we've got another question. Mitchell. Sorry about that. If I click the uh, raise hand button, it did not mean to. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just, yeah, still up. Oh, I see. There's a button to lower your hand. Got there you it. go. Sorry okay, perfect. That. Yeah, and I didn't notice it's just stayed up the whole time. So no problem. All right. Uh, yeah, so anyway, moving on here at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, the Micrologics 1100 PLCs are discontinued by, by Rockwell. Um, and there are still some Micrologics 1400 PLCs. We're going to leave them alone for now, but, but we do want to upgrade the Micrologics 1100. PLCs. There are some PanelView Plus 600 HMIs that are end of life, and we would also like to upgrade to a current offering. Um, now, the intent here is to use a consistent <clears throat> ME program across all of the touchscreens and use access controls as necessary to control what is accessible from each location, but maybe with a supervisor type um, you know, overriding control that could access everything. That will give redundancy if the server goes down or the uh, communication link to the server goes down, that someone could control the entire plant from any of the touchscreen HMIs, right? Not an ideal situation, but definitely would work as a, a lot of redundancy. So that, that's what's trying to be described here in this section of the RFP. Okay, so also simplifies all the touchscreen programs would be identical and uh, simplify upgrades in the future or replacements in the future. Okay, Jonathan, looks like you have a question. Thank you. Um, I'm true on the word some of the PLCs need to be upgraded. I was wondering. Um, on that and the panel views, what is the quantity? Is that something that's going to be provided? Yeah, I think it's listed below that. Yeah. Um, I think it was, was it six of them? I must have missed that somewhere. It says all oh. or some. Yeah, I'll just check. <clears throat> I'll double check that quantity. Um, if you'd submit that as a question, I'll, I'll respond to that. So also on the on the uh, being able to control everything from any one HMI, uh -huh. uh, that it, I may be mistaken, but that entails passing a lot of data table uh, table of data back and forth across. I don't know however many sites and locations, and just um, maybe I maybe a little bit of clarification there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> submit that as a question, and then Adam and I can discuss it, give us some time to kind of walk through it, make sure that uh, we don't think that it's going to overwhelm the system. Thank you. So yeah. I have it written down here on my paper that it was eight uh, 600s that need to be replaced. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll double check on uh, how many. Micrologics 1100s there are. So yeah, I've got that in my notes as well. Okay. So to, to summarize, upgrading the factory talk view client workstation will be provided by the city. So the hardware is provided there. Uh, we need to reconfigure the existing fiber network topology to be a star instead of a daisy chain. They have had lots of communication issues because of this arrangement. That may require some fiber pulling, but it should be minimal. And there should be existing pathways. 
we have one more hand raised here as well. Okay. Yeah, I just had a question that might be uh, easily answered by our uh, resident Rockwell distributor. How much longer do we have with the micro 1400 line? Because that's getting a little old as well. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a supported product for the next 10 years? No, not for 10 years. And that was going to be one of my questions, too, is if there was a chosen controller for the 1100s, which are um, discontinued. I don't know if that's been determined by the city yet, because there are definitely some different options that the city can go. You know if that's been defined? Uh, it was, I don't think there's been anything defined uh, other than it was desired to go with existing Allen Bradley stuff for this. So 1400s are still available. They're still um, uh, an active or active mature product, but 10 years, I would say, it's not going to go up that long. I would anticipate within the within this decade, you know, within the 2020s. Okay. Okay, John, I'll uh, reach out to you for a suitable replacement for the 1100s and the 1400s, and we can uh, collaborate with Adam and decide the best way to go there. Okay, any other questions before we move? I have a couple more bullets to summarize the wastewater treatment. Um, yeah, so I was just wrapping up on the fiber restructure, uh, bullet C upgrade, the alarm dialer. An example is like Win 911. And then we've already talked about upgrading the panel V plus 600s and any obsolete PLCs, primarily the 1100s. And we'll, uh, we'll let you know if the, we add the 1400s to that list. That concludes the wastewater treatment. Moving on to the water treatment system at the Lake Water Treatment Plant. This is a newer facility that has, for the most part, modern and um, still supported hardware and software. Um, it, it, was, it was designed with Rockwell and Alan Bradley um, products. Most of the PLC touchscreen HMIs are also Allen Bradley, so mostly uh, the vast majority of them are panel views. The Factory Talk View SE server is currently a, um, a server client license and arrangement, and there's a server on the second floor in the communications room. Uh, it's being, it has four clients currently. Uh, it's being uh, hosted on hardware that is obsolete. So the workstations are, I think, still running Windows 7, if I remember correctly. So uh, the city, again, will be providing the, the upgraded workstations and server, and we need to upgrade licenses for that. So migration of the of the existing programs and so on on those uh, on the on the HMIs. The there's also a license and an operating factory talk historian. We want to maintain that capability. The plant uses fiber optic cable to communicate between, you know, to at least carry most of the distance between controllers. It's also daisy chained. So we would like to reconfigure the topology on that to make it a start. Okay, so to summarize there, um, upgrading and migrating the historian and the data to a new server, upgrade the factory talk view SE license. And this is where the server will be hosted. I believe we still are sticking with that, Adam. That server will stay there. 
There'll be new servers uh, put in at the Lake Water Treatment Plant. Um, so everything will have to be migrated and re-licensed, reconfigured at Lake Water. Yep, yep. So that will be the hub of, of this system for the server. And so we'll want to bring in data from the wastewater treatment plant to this location. And that's over existing communications pathways, correct, Adam? Yes. And then also everything will be tying in from all the lift stations to this as well. Yep. yep. And then uh, bullet item four, reconfiguring the fiber network to be a star instead of a daisy chain. Any questions on the lake water treatment plant scope? All right, the Sand Creek Water Treatment Plant is a much smaller, much older facility. Um, they're also using just a, a single license, uh, just a standalone for the Factory Talk View SE on the workstation there. Same thing, workstation will be, out, will be upgraded by the city. Um, we'll, we will uh, change this one over to use a client configuration. Uh, let's see. So again, upgrade of the of the program or a, a migration of the program to the new license and the new hardware. The main plant PLC is a 1747L553, so slick line of PLCs. It's still supported, but but Alan Bradley recommends replacing it as they're phasing out all of the slick PLCs. So we want to upgrade that that PLC. So pretty straightforward scope there. Upgrading the factory talk view SE to be a client, communicating to the water treatment plant, and upgrading the PLC. Mitchell has yeah. a question. Yeah. Yeah. So between your wastewater plants and your water plants, do you have an internal city fiber going already? Or how is that communication established? Because I imagine they're not geographically located right next to each other. Yeah, we have dark fiber going between the sites. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. Moving on to the lake raw water pumping station. This is uh, a relatively physic in physical size, small pumping station, but pumps a large volume of water out of the lake to the water treatment plant. Uh, it has one PLC controlling the pumps. It's currently communicating through a wireless radio. The PLC, and it's relatively new. Uh, the PLC is fully supported by the vendor, but it does not have a local touch screen. So we are wanting to either uh, migrate to a cellular radio or pull fiber to the building. Adam can maybe fill us in on that and then add a compatible touch screen to that, to that facility. Um, Adam, so what is the latest on fiber to that building? I don't think it's going to be a viable option at the moment to pull fiber there because it's all on um, a rock pier. Okay. So I'm not sure if that would be a really viable option. Yep. Um, I was just reading that thinking that we should probably just upgrade the point-to-point the -point wireless to that building at the moment. Okay. Uh, more than putting a cell radio in there. Okay. So a little, little deviation there. Um, what I might do is um, mark this up just for my own information. Um, okay. So essentially what we're saying uh, is that we want to Upgrade the upgrade the radio there to improve communications. Yeah, not cellular fibers 
it turned out not to be a viable option. Okay. And the, the plan is, as I think it's listed down below in the collection systems, that there's going to be a, hopefully we're going to have the point to multi-point set up and configured by that point. Um, and that would be able to go over the point to multi-point radio system that we'd be installing. Okay. Jonathan's got a question. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just keyed on the word we would be installing. You're expecting the those who are putting in a proposal here to be installing, correct? No. So I, um, I believe it's probably written in here. I was trying to see if that's written in here, but the city was planning on installing a point to multi point radio system. Understood. So all the radio, cellular, and other communications. Mm -hmm. Um, infrastructure and telemetry is going to be taken care of the city separate from this request for proposal. Uh, yeah, so any communication that would be going over the dark fiber, um, any communications that would be needed between the plants or locations would be um, basically city responsibility. We work with you guys to make sure everything works, um, but we're on site and we'll make sure that that, that portion of it is going to be functional for you. Um, because I don't see anywhere in this project, and I don't remember the project specifying for you guys to do the wireless in this project or as part of this project. Yeah, I think we definitely need to run back through that and um, run back through the RFP and make make that clear. Thank you. I don't know if I was aware the city was moving forward on that on that point to point system. So that'll be good. That'll simplify this for the contractors. Yeah, okay. I think it was listed out in the collection systems below that there was going to be a point to multi point or yeah. cell. So if the point to multi point isn't functional yet, or if it isn't installed yet, then we would just revert to the cell. Um, there's there's kind of a few different balls rolling in on sure. that. Sure. All right. That concludes the water treatment system. Moving on to the collection system. Uh, currently uses alarm dialers with cell cellular radios at most of the lift stations, but not all. Um, we want all of the lift stations. Uh, now I wanna make sure we're, say we, we said the city shop here, Adam, but I know that data needs to get back to be then communicated from there back to the water treatment plant. Right. Okay. And we have a we have dark fiber between the city shop and the water treatment. So that's the city shop is our our best line of sight point, I believe, for kind of centralizing yeah. all of these lift stations. Yeah, I would I would say so. Okay. I actually do have a lift station map here. Um, so yeah, I think the uh, I don't know if the city shop yeah the city shop is not shown on it, but um, if you were to follow that um, red line up or the you know, the green line, I think it is okay. Let's see, you can see my cursor uh, and scroll up a little bit. Okay. So right there, you see the airport um, on the top where and where yeah. the blue line goes and takes a hard right. Yep. So the city shop is right in that, or so right down just a little bit. So yeah, yeah just, here. Yep, that's the city shop. Got it. <clears throat> Something around that area. Okay. Yeah. So the city shop there, you can see the arrangement of lift stations. So, um, you know, some hops may be necessary, especially for these down here, but. So the, again, just to be clear, Adam, the 
the communications at the lift stations, the radios, then the configuration of that will be done by the city? Yes. We'll clarify that in the addendum. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So the intent through that through that radio system is to communicate all alarms, statuses, faults, um, you know, up, up through up through the HMI system. Um, so we will need to have alarms, uh, you know, configured in the alarm dialer appropriately for that system. Also, HMI screens. To show that information there at the at the water treatment plant. I don't I don't think we unless I forgot I don't think we added any HMIs at the city shop right we're not going to have any monitoring capability there at the shop. Correct, Adam. There's nothing there to monitor. Okay, there's, um, no, there's no people there full time at a desk or something that would be able to um, look at the status of the list stations. Uh, they do. They do want to have the station set up. Um, Sorry, Adam. Could you repeat that? For some reason, your audio, at least on my end, got really quiet. Yeah, they they do want to have a workstation that they'll be able to monitor operations. Oh. Uh, Okay, did we put that in there? Okay, yeah, so that's that is actually listed here. So this this one, that workstation based HMI is going to need to be at the shop, right? Okay, perfect. Perfect, just for some clarification. Okay. All the data from those different locations, so like the collections shouldn't be, or utilities guys shouldn't be able to view uh, water treatment or wastewater. So those would all be segregated out. Yeah. Um, they'd all operate off the same servers and off the same systems, but they would be, like permissions would be segregated out between the different locations. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, so all relevant information from the lift stations, flow, run status, level, uh, you know, if, av if available, amp draw, um, and then any, any available alarms need to be communicated through that system. Um, most of these lift stations have already been upgraded with micro MicroLogics PLCs that are still fully supported. Uh, don't re require a an upgrade currently. Um, some of the PLCs and and touchscreen HMIs are manufactured by other vendors or provided by other vendors, so we we definitely do have a hodgepodge of, um, of especially touchscreens throughout the system. Uh, so again, trying to standardize on one system for ease of replacement and, and support. And then as we already discussed, all that data will eventually uh, be viewable on, or not viewable, but stored on the wastewater treatment plant. Or yeah, also, so let me clarify, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, needs to be accessible from the wastewater treatment plant We've already talked about viewable from the shop. The, the data will also go to the historian at the water treatment facility, but won't, won't primarily be viewed there. Okay, so we, we put on here, just again, want to clarify, Adam, that everybody's on the same page. We, we put on here that this data will be viewable at the wastewater treatment plant, and we've also talked about it'll be viewable at the, the city shop. Is that correct? So wastewater, viewable at the wastewater, I'll verify with them. I think they were willing to work with each other on that because um, the litigation is directly in that wastewater. Okay, sorry, I'm having audio issues again on the back half of 
of that. I'm not sure why. Further clarification from our wastewater team. Okay, great. Um, Greg, do you have any input on that or? I think the answer is, well, I know the answer is yes, that uh, we'll want to view it at the treatment plant as well, the mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. We also want UPSs installed at all lift stations that are you know, rated for that application, listed for that application by the manufacturer. Okay. I, I can walk through each individual. It's kind of a lot of repeats of the same thing. So I think I'll kind of just skim over these at this point. Um, we've talked about just the overall system projects, and uh, then it goes, we go through each individual lift station and address specifically what it needs. Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, the communication items can be ignored. And we'll, up, we'll update the RFP to reflect that. Okay, so I think if, yeah, go ahead, Jonathan. Thank you. I keep missing that prompt on the combo of keys. I need to hit to unmute myself, I guess. Um, it's all right. I, just as a kind of covering all these, there's a lot of, um, um, it sounds like conversions that I don't know about a lot, but there's a number of conversions that need to be occur between um, different brand makers of PLC or HMIs. Um, in general, will there be information provided on um, exactly what um, these are and also on what screens we're looking at, how many tags, how many IO, those kinds of specifics. I have a laundry list. I won't go through it all right now because um, it's very kind of detail level. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to ask on a, a here, you know, before the meeting ends, what level of, of, of uh, you know, PNIDs, schematics and tags and IO uh, information will be provided? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the city has if anything i i was not given anything during my evaluations on on that now the like i said the lift stations are a lot of them the controls have been been upgraded relatively recently um so there may be some limited documentation but in general what i've found is that uh, there's there's not a lot and the availability of, let's say, the programs, especially if they're not Alan Bradley, is um, not guaranteed. So okay. from my perspective, these, these lift stations are all pretty simple from a controls perspective. You know, usually just a couple pumps, one mm -hmm. or two level sensors, um, you know, just a handful of I.O., you know, a, a, a great, a great uh case for you know simple controls the um you know the the, the micrologics type of systems in the past so um, i think that the best approach is probably going to be having a uh, you know a, a generic system for each and then uh, you know whether if it needs a plc obviously you budget for that and if it needs an hmi you know, and or it needs an HMI, you budget for that. Um, but they're all pretty similar. I, I would say the biggest differences are um, in the level sensors. There's kind of all different types. I think they've got, if I remember correctly, they've got some pressure transducers. They certainly have some um, ultrasonic and I think some floats as well. So uh, you know, as far as the level indication goes, it's kind of across the board on the options. 
but they're all more or less operating very similarly and, and very, you know, they're, they're all pretty simple. So um, okay. it's a little difficult to get documentation or even get our hands on the existing programs. Certainly, and I, I understand that. That's that's kind of why I requested previously um, an on-site assessment, because I understand, you know, some instruments will, you know, can communicate uh, STI, you know, a form of ASCII that, that you know, is kind of a headache and could add quite a bit of time and, and you know, sure. the programming. And also, you know, what questions that pop in my mind is what are the sizes of the, of the HMIs and, you know, just, these some of these details do will have some sure. some, some um, bearing on the pricing of even the materials. Um, yeah, yeah. So submit your questions, and we will try to. What I think makes the most sense is to standardize, right? Use a consistent size across all the lift stations on on the HMI, you know, things like that. So submit those questions, and we'll we'll gotcha. discuss and and then and give a consistent answer. Um, okay. I I don't. Yeah, a lot, a lot of good questions, a lot of good details to work through, um, but I don't think uh, with the lift stations it, it needs to be overly complicated. At the end of the day, right? These are pretty simple systems, and uh, so. all right, thank you. Yeah, and I think though on the on the instrumentation, you're going to either be seeing discrete inputs like on the floats, like I mentioned, or four to twenty milliamp signals. I don't think there's anything outside of that. Um, no, don't hold me to that one hundred percent because I didn't. Look at uh, look at that. I didn't take documentation on the panel layouts and the wiring, but I did look at all of them. I didn't see anything that stood out to me as being uncommon. No, uh, like no some of these are base. I'm sorry. It looks like some of the panels are currently using ProFace. ProFace. Um, yeah. You know, other other. Um, Considerations are, you know, maybe not here in the collections, but in other areas where the, the number of PIDs that program or controls that we need to consider, you know, what are we, what kind of, um, what number and, and processes are using uh, PIDs uh, in the programming. Um, but again, I can, I can submit that in questions. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, walking through the lift stations, you know, a lot of the similar type situations either need a new HMI um, or PLC or both. I don't think there's anything too different than kind of that general situation. So again, I'm, unless someone wants me to, I'm not going to go through each one. Okay, so that concludes. Yeah. So Someone saying I was something. Say, I think there was a three that were were removed um, from there. So out of the nineteen or twenty, there is uh, the South Boyer Exxon and City Beach should be removed from this. And I think I don't think they're in this proposal. I counted uh, seventeen, Adam. I I'm not sure about the South Boyer. I guess. But uh, definitely Exxon and, uh, and City Feature not in there. Oh yeah, South. So if you scroll up a little bit more there, got, South Boyer is. Yeah. But yeah, South Boyer actually, yes, that one is replaced. Yeah. So is the Exxon yeah. and City Beach that were right below that should have been removed. Yeah. So seventeen of the nineteen lift stations need attention in this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I think this list is accurate. What we was what we're saying, correct? Okay. Yeah. But we don't have any in there that shouldn't. So seventeen total. All right. That concludes the uh, the summary of the scope of work. Are there any other questions on what we've covered so far? We have a question. What was that, Adam? Mm -hmm. 
And I'm I'm not getting audio right now, so someone will have to repeat that for me. Tom, are you hearing it? On no. his first, wondering uh, if you can get like how many I/O cards there would be. Just um, overall, IO overall, list. yeah, overall I/O list. Okay, for uh, for one of the specific facilities, or each each replaced PLC. Each replaced PLC. Okay. Yeah, I think we could come up with a, a, a general estimate for each of those. That would be fine. Okay. And then the other question I think would be. So the other question was um, for a site visit, that would be the project team that would make that decision. Um, that would not be my decision to make. So if there is, um, if you would like to open up to where there could be a site visit, the process would be that it would be like this pre-solicitation conference, it would be um, a set date and time um, that then the city and the project team would then go to the different locations with everybody as a group. There would not be any individual site visits allowed as far as, you know, with the with the team. And I don't think that there's, um, any access to a lot of these areas uh, without um, the project team as part of it anyway. So, yeah, and the only reason I bring that up is, uh, you know, some of these places we're installing a whole new PLC HMI. We just don't know what we got for room in there, where it can go, where we're going to be moving stuff from. Uh, Would it be something that'd be helpful if I went around and grabbed pictures or something like that? Absolutely. Okay. Because I know a lot of them have fairly large metal boxes. They're they're you know they're uh, probably four foot by you know four foot or something like that with one foot of clearance on the inside, maybe even two feet of clearance on some of them. So there's there's a lot of room in most of them. So there's a possibility that we could actually use that enclosure for our new. Tubes. Yes. Yeah. They're they're all enclosed in metal boxes. There's room for UPSs. Oh, um, okay. So the battery backups will be able to fit inside of there. Uh, there's heaters in there there's there's all sorts of stuff so there's there's plenty of room okay um, i didn't know if we had existing boxes that we could put stuff in or if we needed to find wall space and, you know it's yeah kind of a little big there so yeah no there's every every location has quite a bit of, of room i don't think there's i don't think there's a single location that's not going to be that you, that you find a lack of space in okay last question then we'll yeah be on the uh, fiber Okay. So if we could just kind of possibly get a little bit, maybe even just a length of the fiber that we're going to be looking at in order to make the star configuration. So you're talking what wastewater and water treatment? Yeah. Um because if it's in a loop, if it's in a loop right now, mm -hmm. depending on how that was ran, it it may be it could possibly be tough to it wouldn't be impossible, but the amount of fiber that we may end up using could be. Extensive. So you want yeah. to repeat the question because they won't have been able to hear it. So he is he's wondering yeah. on the fiber um, if we can get a yeah. estimated length of the fiber that would be needed yep. um, for the wash wastewater and water treatment plants. Um, so on those, I would have to get that. I I believe there's conduit run between all those locations already, so it should be a fairly straightforward pull. Um, and all those would be basically home run back to the, the core switches. Yes, exactly. Um, and I would say your longest length, if you pull up that map real quick, Donnie. Sure. And kind of zoom hey, in. Adam, let's just, uh, let's verify it all and make sure we got room on patch panels and all that kind of stuff, okay? Okay. Yeah, so it would be, there. there's, I think there's 10 buildings on the, in the water treatment and the furthest building, I want to say, is 150, 200 feet. Um, and then every other building would become closer and closer, other than the pump station, which is, I don't, I wouldn't run fiber to that currently with the rock, rocky pier. So I would just be like the wireless going to that one. Okay. But most of them are going to be, you know, 200 feet, I would say, or less, 300 feet or less, somewhere in that range. Okay. Um, and then... Probably same as septic or wastewater. Okay. But yeah, we can get verification on that. 
And if pictures are taken, uh, we will um, post those as part of an addendum. Okay. Cheryl, would you like me to walk through the proposal format and content, or would you like to do that? So you can you can go through that part, and then I will cover the um, the bid submission requirements. And okay, and one other question here too. Oh, there's another internal yeah, question. Yeah, and I think it's a good time because it, it goes with the previous question. But even though some of these systems are very simple. Just to say that you need to replace a Micrologix 1100, like the last question brought up, that 1100 might have a site card or additional I.O. because one of those conditions may have, you know, an, an extra analog or, or uh, signal coming in or out. That's why I think the pictures is a great idea because it would at least let us know, uh, just even a picture is going to let us know what I.O. requirements are necessary. And I'd also really recommend if possible, to get a snapshot of that part number on those HMIs. Because again, just saying we want to replace panel view 600, we've really got several options where that could go. So I think the pictures, in my opinion, I've, I've done a lot of these type of upgrades, and I think that the pictures would be good enough for us to really not necessarily need to tag along. Uh, yeah, all right, more pictures, the better, but. Okay. Yeah. So did you, um, were you able to catch that, um, Donnie? I did, yeah. Okay. And Adam, you and I can work together on that. I have a lot of pictures from when I was there. So if we think we're missing something specific, you know, you can you can grab that, but it should, we should be able to minimize the number of pictures we still need to take. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, moving on, proposal format and content. Just wanna uh, touch on the highlights. I'm sure you all have read this. Um, proposals are limited to 10 single-sided, eight and a half by 11 pages that does not include the cover page or dividers, no less than 11 point font. Um, some sections that should be included, letter of interest. Uh, one page maximum staff qualifications. Um, the pro minimum, the project manager shall have related experience. Uh, each individual that will work on the project should be indicated, um, you know, showing showing relevant experience. Uh, three client references. Three page maximum for that section. Next is man management approach. So if you describe your approach, including the coordination and monitoring of the project schedule, cost, scope, communications, quality, resource management, and other management issues. Two page maximum for that. Um, and then also, you know, related project experience for your company over the last three years. So if you can provide project names, dates, descriptions, locations, uh, which team members worked on those projects, uh, four pages maximum there. Section F shows the point award for each of those sections and how that will be, um, how that will be scored. Okay, moving on to price evaluation. Uh, the, the price proposal reflected on the pricing forum will, cons will constitute the maximum fixed lump sum price payable to the vendor and will be reviewed and scored as follows. The proposer with the lowest price will be awarded the maximum available points of, <laughs> not sure if that's supposed to be 30 or 40 there. Cheryl, we've got a discrepancy. Yeah. It's supposed to be 40. 40. Thank I can you. make that correction in an addendum. Thank you. I yeah. didn't notice that previously. I didn't notice it either. <laughs> my, my bad. That's all good. The proposer with the second lowest baseline price will be awarded points upon 
the ration of the lowest baseline price divided by the second lowest baseline price and multiplied by 40 points. Scoring shall constant, or sorry, sorry, shall continue as described for all other prices. Okay, and there's that, just an example of how that would look. Okay, and then also uh, best value determination but again, just an example of what that looks like. So yeah, we've got got a couple little math errors we need to correct through that section. Okay, project schedule. schedule. This RFP was issued on June 29th. Um, this has been pushed back. What's the new date here now? The submission sure. date is August 22nd. And that's already been issued in an addendum. Yep. Um, yep. Just wanted to make sure we, we state what that yep. is. And the question deadline was not in addendum number one, so it will be in addendum number two. And the questions deadline is going to be 2 p.m. on August 15th, which is one week before the submission deadline. It gives us time to answer the questions if we have to do another addendum and get everything posted in time for the submission. Okay, perfect. So yeah, then as, as shown in the addendum, all of these dates moved back. And then just, um, just as an FYI, the city council contract approval date with all of these other dates being pushed would be tentative for, um, let me see. I just want to make sure it's going to be tentative for September 6th. An FYI on that. The notice to proceed, if it got approved, would be September 7th. Okay. And as far as I would think, the completion date remains the same. <clears throat> and we got another question here. Project team, so. So it's not so much a question as a an awareness mm -hmm. uh, that completion date, given this, the current status of some of the equipment, that may be an unrealistic date due to some shortage we shortages we currently have with some of that hardware. So I don't know if you want to make that flexible or put in a clause for supply chain. But yeah, there's so given the current situation that's going to be a hard date to hit. So the, um, I don't know if you heard, but the concern for the completion date of March 15th is um, resulting from potential supply chain issues, which we are all yeah. well aware of. Um, so he's just asking for um, some, maybe some language, maybe we put that in the agreement or something about the um, completion date. <clears throat> you know, might be affected by um, supply chain issues, getting the hardware and such that's necessary. Okay. So, sounds good to me. Did okay. you want me to pick this card up, Donnie? Sure, that would be perfect. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so the submission, um, the submission deadline again is August 22nd at 2 p.m. It is not a public opening, just um, so that you're aware of that. Um, the proposals will be evaluated um, probably the, the following week, later the week of the 22nd into the following week. If there's interviews, um, the respondents will be contacted. Um, there may or may not be interviews. It just, it depends on the evaluation committee. The proposals are to be submitted, not via email. We need three hard copies and one um, electronic PDF copy on a thumb drive or such. They get submitted. Please make sure the outside of the envelope, and even if it is sent via FedEx or UPS or other delivery method, that, that it is clear on that envelope as well um, what's inside. Um, because we get a lot that come through delivery methods and we don't know what's on the inside 
and we have no choice but to open it because it could be for other city business. We have no idea. So please make sure the envelopes are clearly marked with the RFP number and title. Um, and they get sent to city clerk at the 1123 Lake Street address as identified within the RFP. Um, and let's see, make sure within that bid or the proposal is exhibit A, the price form must be included in the submission um, materials. And oh, what was I thinking? Um, the, the price form also makes sure that all addenda is, I, is notated on that price form. It is a requirement so that we are, know that all respondents have seen all the addendums, addenda and what may have changed. Um, and then you will also see attachment B is the sample agreement. The sample agreement is pretty much all of the legal requirements and such. Um, and so make sure that you basically are in agreement with that sample agreement that you see because you that's the agreement that you will be signing. It has the insurance requirements in there. We are going to discuss the bonding. Um, if there's going to be a requirement for performance and payment bonding, that will be as part of addendum number two. Um, that is That needs to be discussed with the project team. So just so you're aware about that. Um, and any licensing requirements, you are required to have a city of standpoint business license. And of course, any other required um, federal, state, local licensing that would be required to um, provide the service. So you have business license cost here? Um, I believe if you are a new business, I think it's like $53. I guess, yeah. So, it's not very much. It's just a... And that's prior to the RFP. Yeah. No, that is prior to contract award. So you would not get the business license unless you you were going to be the um, the consultant that's being given the contract. Okay. That's when you would get the business license. Okay. Um, you don't need a business license to submit an RFP. <clears throat> I mean, to submit a proposal yes. to the RFP. Yes. You know what I mean. Um, so um, I can't think of anything else. Um, the only thing that is not included, like I said, is any potential bonding requirement, but that will be, um, that will be included in addendum number two, if there will be, if there's not, then it will not be part of the addendum because it is not currently a requirement in the RFP, but it has been brought up. So we need to have that discussion. Sure. Donnie, that's about it for me. I don't think I forgot anything. Okay. Great. Yeah, the last thing I'll say um, at the end, the last section of the RFP are the performance specifications. So additional information is provided there, as I'm sure you've seen uh, on um, you know, installation, testing, and so on. So make sure you read through those. If there are any questions on what's there, just submit those as well. And what is the city's uh, budget for this RFP? Um, that was part of the advertisement. I Let me look because I don't have that out the top of my head. Maybe it was. Yeah, it was. Um, I will be able to tell you in two seconds. Okay, maybe three. Two. Estimated cost is 240 240,000, let me. The question was, what was the estimated budget? Yep. And the estimated budget is about 240,000. Okay. Not budget, but estimated cost. Yeah. And then also just to quick clarify, to make sure it's clear that any questions need to be sent um, to my email address, Cheryl Hughes, um, in writing. And my email address is in the RFP document. And then I will um, disperse the questions to the project team for the answers and a Q&A 
is posted on the city solicitation page as well as in a potential agenda that might come out of the Q and A. Did anybody have anything else? Any further questions online? And nothing more to add, Donnie, or? Not for me, thank you. Okay, I think we're good here. So I think that concludes this pre-solicitation conference and thank you everybody for joining and Donnie for all your efforts in this and Absolutely. Tom for joining as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.